Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the first day of the CalGEM online data virtual workshops. My name is Christina Jimenez and I am the Public Transparency Officer with the California Geologic Energy Management Division. So um, thank you again. We are excited to have you here. And um, just a few things we wanted to go over as we start. Um, for reference, today, tomorrow, and Thursday's workshops will cover the same information. Um, and if you can't join us live uh, this week, we will be recording these as well to make those available. So first to start off, um, you know, we designed these workshops to be brief and informative and cover, you know, the broad strokes of data available through CalGEMS resources. So um, as you may know, there are three data portals that we work with pretty regularly. We have CalGEMS WellFinder, WellStar Data Dashboard, and WellStar itself. And so Today, the team will provide short demonstrations or presentations for each data portal, and we've allowed, we've set aside some time he here to, for subject matter staff to kind of go over those with you. Um, we will have a question and answer session at the end to go over any questions asked. Um, however, please feel free to send any questions in through our Q&A chat function at the top here. Um, throughout the entire presentations and you know staff are, are standing by to help answer those as we can. So um, again, we welcome you all for joining us um, and, and also to add the question and answer session. We understand that some, some questions may take a little longer time to answer, so um, we may follow back up with you on a particular question if it takes uh, a little more research. So um, thank you. Next slide, please. So just to give you a little bit of background um, on CalGEM here, we have um, CalGEM is a uh, part of the Department of Conservation. We have about 300 employees and has about a budget of 80 million. And you know we prioritize the protection of public health, safety, and the environment in our oversight of oil, natural gas, and geothermal operations in California. Next slide, please. Uh, we, the division regulates the upstream of oil and gas industry. Um, we know California is the seventh largest oil and gas producing state, and the state produces about 400,000 barrels of oil per day. Um, however, today, California permits more wells to be plugged and permanently abandoned than it permits to drill new wells. So, um, you know, this information we can definitely provide as well, our PowerPoint following the event. So happy to share that. Next slide, please. All right, so um, before we dive into the demonstrations, I wanted to just share a little bit of information on where we can find some resources aside from today's um, demos. So we have the CalGEM online data webpage, uh, which houses, um, a wide variety of items, including our reference guide for, you know, accessing how to dive into some of these these data portals. So step by step guides, um, and that is available here, as well as um, quite a few of YouTube tutorials that staff have put together to help you navigate yeah, these data portals. And um, as always, if we if you have any questions or more technical um, questions. We're happy to help you following the event as well, and we can have connect you with a um, separate meeting or separate dive into the data. So always please feel to reach out to us uh, directly to the CalGEM Public Transparency Office. Next slide, please. All right, so our first demonstration will be um, via WellFinder, and uh, our presenter will be Tay Kim, who is our research data analyst in CalGEM. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. My name is Tay Kim, Kim and I'm an analyst for CalGEM GIS unit and I will be demonstrating the functionalities of WellFinder with you today. The GIS unit has various sources for everyone to view and access CalGEM data spatially including the state geoportal, 
This website provides data in different formats, such as shapefiles and map services for everyone to utilize, as well as the capabilities to preview on map and table formats. Next, we have the GIS mapping webpage on the GOC website. And finally, we have the WellFinder application, an interactive map viewer which today's demo will be focusing on. Most CalGEM spatial data are extracted from WellStar database and is updated nightly. I will now share my screen with you to first orient you to the division's online data portal. Everything that, I, that you will learn about today can be found through CalGEM webpage called Online Data. When you are on the Department of Conservation's website, you can go to the division's drop down and go to oil, gas, and geothermal. From here, you can get to the online data page from the left hand side menu. And you can see a long list of resources available on the online data webpage. I want to point out that the, that the reference guide is linked as one of the first items. You'll see this demo later on the dashboard in WellStar. I'm going to go over WellFinder with you today, and all of these applications can be found right here on the online data webpage. Now let's move on to look at some of the available data and functionality in WellFinder. WellFinder is an interactive map viewer that displays oil, gas, and geothermal spatial data that users can view, search, and download CalGEM data, as well as connect to other CalGEM data applications. Most of the functions for viewing and searching are available on the left-hand side of WellFinder application. You can find all the data available under the Layers tab. Some of the more frequently used data include well, facility, notice and permit, as well as city, county, and legislative districts. The wells are symbolized by well type and well status. You can view these symbols by the corresponding meaning when you expand on the layer list. Now, I want to introduce you to some of the data searching tools. But first and foremost, on top of the layer list, you'll see the well status and well type filter. These are a series of checkbox filters that display the well type and status combinations as you like. There are several ways to search for well related information. I will take you through some of the examples and show you how you can connect to other applications like WellStar and Data Dashboard. The most direct way to search is when you know specific information, information like the ID for a well or a permit number. In these cases, you want to use the search by attribute option. Here, if you know the ID for a well, you can type in the well API under this box and click on search. This one is in Huntington Beach. As you can see, the application will zoom to the location and have a purple ring around the selected. If you do not know the specific information that you are looking for, or have a general idea the search by shape is the most helpful. If you're interested in finding out how many wells there are around, for example, the city of Costa Mesa near LA, you can turn on the city layer and find Costa Mesa on the map. Here, it helps you to turn off the well layer and change the maze map for better visibility. Now you can see the purple city boundaries of city of Costa Mesa much easier. Now from here, you can go to back to by shape. Now you can go back to the by shape and click on the freehand tool and draw an area within city of Costa Mesa that you would like to search. Now click on search and you'll get a layer list of 63 wells inside city of Costa Mesa. You can also add to your existing results by clicking on the checkbox under the filter. 
For example, if you want to locate wells around the city of Irvine, you can repeat the previous steps and check on the Add to Existing Results box. This results will be on top of your previous results. Now you can see that we found 66 wells near Costa Mesa and Irvine in the polygons I drew. From here, you can click on the individual wells in the attribute table to be directed to it in the map. You can also click on the export button on the right hand side to export the data as Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or a CSV file onto your desktop. You can clear the results by clicking on clear button in the attribute table and clicking clear all. The next example is helpful for when you are searching for a feature near a specific location. Say you want to know if there are any wells near Dodger Stadium in LA. You can change the base map to satellite imagery for better visualization and orientation. We can look up the stadium first by using the search bar on top of the map. Type in Dodger Stadium on the search bar and the app will display matching results. From here, you can drop a point in the center of the stadium using the point shape. You can also expand the search by adding a buffer around it. For this example, we can search wells within 2,500 feet of the stadium by typing in 2,500 in the buffer and dropping the point in the Dodger Stadium. The red ring around the point indicates that there is a buffer set for the search. Now click on search, and you'll see the results on the attribute table. Once again, you can clear the results by clicking clear and clear all. Another tool that you can use is the zoom to field. This tool will allow you to zoom to and focus on a specific oil field. For example, you can type in or scroll to an oil field you had in mind. For example, I will type in Lost Hills. and the app will zoom to Lost Hills in Kern County. Here, I will demonstrate a way to use search by attribute functions for well stimulations. Just like searching for known well IDs, the application allows you to search for well stimulation permits by permit numbers. First, go to the layer list and turn on the well stimulation layer by checking in on the box, and I will also turn off the wells layer for better visibility. Now you will see these blue dots on the map indicating that this well stimulation layer is now visible. This corresponds to the symbology legend in the layer list. Now you can go back up to search by attributes and click on the layer well stimulations. Click in and query by search by permit number and type in a permit number that you have in mind. Once you click search, the map will take you there. You'll see the information on the bottom of the screen on the attribute table. For more information, you can also click on the point, which gives you a pop-up window. You can click on any features on the map and it'll give you a pop-up window. You can see for this pop-up is populated with general information about the well stimulation permit I searched for. Here you'll see permit number, stimulation type, as well as well API, lease name, well number, well status, well type, and operator, and more. There are also very helpful links at the bottom of each pop-up message that will take you to other CalGEM applications, which include the dashboard pages and the Wellstar web browsers. The well record request page is when you view and pop-up window in the well layer. When you click on any of these links, you'll get to a new browser on the tab you clicked on you'll see these other applications being demonstrated later. The last tool I want to show you today is the measurement tool. By clicking on the distance tool, you can manually measure the distance anywhere on the map of your interest. For example, you can click on a point on the map and double click off another point 
and give you a measurement on the bottom on the results. You can choose different units of measurements as well as options to make a measurement of an area or a location. There is a PDF document on the DOC website documenting most of the functionalities that I showed you today. You can always refer to that reference guide document. If you have any other questions or suggestions on the data access or WellFinder functionalities, please let us know. This concludes my demonstration of WellFinder. I will now hand it back to Christina. Thank you, Tay. OK, um, our next demonstration will be on the Wellstar data dashboard. Um, uh, and I will hand it over to Abby. Thank you, Christina. Good morning. My name is Abby Ajayi. I'm an oil and gas engineer working with the data management unit within the Cal within CalGym. Today I'll be demonstrating one of the CalGym data platform, which is the Wellstar data dashboard. Next slide, please. The demonstration will focus on data visualization, the fit featuring capability, interactive functions within the dashboard, and it will also, I will also demonstrate the links to other CalGym data platform which have been demonstrated today. I will start off by sharing how you can get to the dashboard from our online data page. As mentioned earlier by Tay, the CalGym online data page has uh, the links to the public data platform uh, that CalGym have. So I will scroll down to the different uh, data platform that we have, and I'm going to go ahead and select the Wellstar data dashboard. On the Wellstar data dashboard web page, uh, you will find information on about the dashboard itself. The information tells you that the dashboard gleans information from Wellstar, which is a CalGym record keeping system. Also on this page, you will find information about uh, how to reach us for assistance or for issues or suggestions concerning the Wellstar data dashboard. Um, you can reach us either by email or you can also each reach us by phone. If you do reach us by email, we do suggest that you include in the email subject a Wellstar data dashboard inquiry. Right below that, we do have the data disclaimer. The data disclaimer is information about data that is being provided in the dashboard. At the bottom of the uh, Wellstar dashboard page, you will find the access link that will take you into the dashboard itself. On, get, on clicking on that, the first thing you will see will be the data disclaimer, as mentioned earlier in the web page, and also you will have information on reasonable accommodation. The dashboard has been designed to be ADA compliant in all aspects, but is, if, in, in case there is any issues uh, with ADA or reasonable accommodation, please contact our EEO officer, Ellen Austin, via email or by, via phone. Once you read the data disclaimer, uh, you acknowledge and that takes you into the Wallstar uh, landing page, the Wallstar data dashboard landing page. On the landing page, there are few information that is very important. Uh, it is important to note the date that uh, the data was last updated, and that is what we have in red in the middle of the dashboard landing page. So the data that we're displaying today was last updated August 24, 2021. Also on this page to the top left hand corner is the quick start guide. The quick start guide is a training materials that takes you through how to quickly navigate the dashboard. Also below on the on the left hand side, we have the uh, links, Apple links to bulk data download for historic uh, production pre 2018 or post 2018. Also, we do have links to the uh, API that have changed in the course of time since April 28th. 
uh, April 2018. Uh, the dashboard currently has um, eight pages. Uh, we have the well information page, the well production volume. The well production volume uh, displays information in the last three years. So here you will find information from 20, uh, 2019 to 2021. The same thing for the well injection volume, and this is so because of a uh, limitation uh, due to the platform that we're using. Um, also beneath that, we will have you will have the uh, access to the yearly production volume archive. This covers information, historic production information from 1977 to 2018. Also, we have the uh, a dashboard page for uh, notice information undergrad gas storage, well stimulation application, and well stimulation disclosure. For this demonstration, I will be demonstrating the well stimulation application and the well stimulation disclosure pages. The layout of the dashboard is similar to um, in all true. Uh, the layout, the design uh, that you see on the well stimulation treatment permit application is similar to what you will find in all the other pages. To the top left hand corner, you have the link that will take you to the home button and that takes you back to the landing page. We also have uh, hyperlinked onto here the uh, some training materials. This is a user guide. Uh, the user guide is specific to the page you are on. So when you click on the user guide, uh, it's talking about the well simulation treatment application, and it covers most of the thing that will be demonstrating here today. Beneath the user guide is the Apple link to glossary pages, and the glossary page has information uh, with definition of the frequently used time that you will see within the dashboard. Right below the glossary page, we have the advanced filter. With the advanced filter, you can customize your search. So if you have information of a known permit number, you can input that. and you will select Eid filter to be able to see the, your output. And if you do want to go back to uh, clear uh, the filter, you select advanced filter and you click on filter and that resets uh, the page back to the default page. Now I am going to go ahead and move to demonstrating the donor chats on the left hand corner. The donor chat have information of application uh, well stimulation treatment uh, application by well type. You can you can filter within the permit type. And as you filter, you can see that your other the other chats being displayed are also being filtered. But I would encourage that to have a better control of what you're displaying uh, to always use the advanced filter. I will move next to the uh, bar chart, which is displays the well simulation application by year. These information include applications that have been submitted in respective of the status. You can also filter with on the uh, the bar charts. Let's say I am interested in seeing uh, applications submitted in 2020. I can select 2020 and narrow it down. And I can also drill down to break the applications that have been submitted in 2020 into quarters. This displays how the distribution of the applications within each of the quarters in 2020. I can further break this down into months. I can let's for example, I want to break down the quarter by uh, the quarter four by months. So this displays the distribution of the applications submitted by months. You can view this distribution you, uh, either by focusing and you can just focus only the chat that you want to see and take a screenshots. 
you can go back to the report. You can also view this information as a table. So you have the bar charts of your selection and you also have the table. I can also view the information in each of this month as a data point. I'll right click and I'll show data point as a table. So this will display all permits that were submitted in December and uh, it would display it as a table. You can always go back to the advanced filter to reset the page. Next, I'll move on to the Bing map. The Bing map is just an overview of the location of the well location. To have a more in-depth information about the well location, you will have to go into the table grid and inside the table grid, we have upper links to other uh, CalGym data platform. There is a link to Wellster uh, browser and there is a link to the Well Finder, which was demonstrated earlier by Tay. Also, there is a link to the legacy documents that uh, is associated with these permits. That means documents that were issued outside of Wellster. So, for example, I can view the permit record associated with these permits. When I click on the link, it takes me to the Well Record page and I can always request any of those forms, any of these uh, files. Also, if uh, you have, uh, there's Apple link to the application page and there's Apple link to the SQL determination documents. All these can be requested. Um, for the table grid, the table grid can also be focused. I'm gonna go ahead and focus the table grid for a better view and you can always scroll down and go back up. Also, you can filter within the table grid. For example, if I'm interested in isolating just information consigning uh, this uh, permit number, I will select it and that filters um, my selection. And you can see, uh, you will notice that all the other uh, chat also filters as well. And I can click back on it and it resets the filter choice. Now I will move into the well stimulation disclosure page. Operators are mandated to provide information regarding uh, the well stimulation fluid uh, in terms of the composition and disposition of those stimulation fluid. These are the information that are displayed on this well page. This page you will notice is similar to the previous page, which um, I earlier demonstrated, the well stimulation uh, treatment application page. You have the link to the user guide. This user guide is specific to this very page. So you will notice that this user guide is specific to the well stimulation treatment disclosure, and it will cover most of the things that I will be demonstrating today. Um, also, we have um, the advanced filter. So the filter choice is almost similar to the well stimulation application, although there is a few variation. Here you can you are able to do your search either by the water source type, um, and you can also do your um, um, filter by chemical constituents of each of the fluid. The pie chart on the left is displaying information about the chemical constituent of the stimulation fluid use. And right here, we're displaying the top five by percentage mass. Next to the pie chart is the bar chart. The bar chart shows you the completed stimulation by year. So every stimulation application that was approved and completed, the information will be here. So like I've shown in the other page, you can also filter. You can filter and you can also drill down. And this also can be further break it, uh, broken down to months. Go back to the advanced filter and reset. The last thing I'll be demonstrating on this page is the table grid. 
on the table grid, we have information, uh, the APA link to Wellster, and we also have IPA link to the well record consigning the uh, pertaining to the well that is associated with the permit with the well stimulation permit. Another information that you can get from the table grid will be the total stimulation fluid volume. You can get the base fluid volume. You can get also get the information about the water source type and the water source name that is used. So this brings me to the conclusion of the demonstration. I'll now hand over back to Christina. Thank you, Abby. Our next segment um, is our final demonstration and it will be on Wellstar. And uh, I will hand it over to Charlie Gomes, who is um, our engineering geologist. Thanks, Christina. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Charlie Gomes. I'm an engineering geologist with CalGEM's ORCID office. Uh, and then just to, to brief recap, well, Wellstar is, uh, allows you to access well, UIC, well stim, and well maintenance data. Uh, and it's really the database that uh, data is pulled from for the other two tools that were demoed today. So to access Wellstar, I will share my screen. Uh, you'll first need to navigate to the CalGEM webpage. Uh, to get there, you can go to www.conservation.ca.gov, and then under the Divisions tab is the Oil, Gas, and Geothermal dropdown. Similar to the other two tools, the Wellstar link is located on the Online Data tab. On the Online Data tab is also those useful reference documents, including the YouTube tutorial videos, as well as the reference guide explaining the different tools explained today. When you're ready to access Wellstar, Locate the Wellstar link and navigate to the Wellstar page. Similar to the other two pages, we have a brief uh, intro page that again links uh, some applicable training materials. Uh, quickly highlighting on this page, there's also uh, assistance if needed, can be reached out to the service desk mail using the service desk email template. The template really just describes the issue you're, you're having and helps our uh, service desk address your needs. Finally, when you're ready to access Wellstar, locate the Wellstar link and navigate into the system. The first time you access Wellstar, similar to the data dashboard, uh, we do have a data disclaimer, uh, which just says that Wellstar contains third party data uh, and the data is provided to, well, to CalGEM through a series of standardized forms that captures information in similar ways uh, across the state and then it's reviewed by uh, CalGEM and then finally posted to Wellstar once it's approved. So once we've read and agreed to the data disclosure, we can go ahead and select this checkbox and accept, and we're navigated to the home page for the public uh, version of Wellstar. On this web page, there's several key points to, to locate. First is the data description. So using the Explore Data dropdown, you'll be able to view several different list pages. And what the list pages are, are high level aggregates of lots of information in table views. Additional information on specific wells, well stem permits, well disclosures, or UIC projects is available through the links found on list pages. Similar to Abby's demonstration, you can really drill down the information you're looking for by navigating through the different links available on the page. Additional tools in the in public Wellstar is the bulk data download under the tools menu. You'll be able to download uh, bulk data in production volumes, as well as other bulk data data sets. And then finally, we have a, a file request link to the well record search for well stem application data prior to when Wellstar was implemented. The third and final link on the top menu option is the maps menu. Selecting this link will actually take you out of Wellstar and over to Wellfinder, which Tay demoed earlier. And then the last bit of information on the bottom of the page here is steering the users to uh, help information contained on the user guides, which will take you back to the conservation CalGEM site and point you towards the available Wellstar trainings. And then another plug for the service desk uh, email if you have any technical issues. At any point when you're navigating around Wellstar, if you want to jump back to this home page, you can select this home button in the top left hand corner. 
So jumping right in, we'll go ahead and jump into an explore data list page for well simulation. When you're first taken to list pages, there may be default settings or a required pre-filter that you need to set prior to any rows populating. There's no pre-filter applied on the well stim page, but there is a default setting to sort descending on date issued. You'll notice these default sorts by a blue arrow depicted next to the column. You can turn those sorts around, turn them off, or apply them again by simply clicking that column, and it'll switch the sort into whichever one suits your needs best. When viewing information in Wellstar, the different list pages are all set up in a similar fashion, where a table will contain many rows, the columns on the rows are labeled at the top pinned section, and then using the gear icon, we can see and turn off and on any additional rows or columns. Selecting these checkboxes will remove and add those columns back onto our table. The first useful tool when looking at information in a table view is the quick search option. The quick search functions on several key fields found within the table you're viewing. One thing to keep in mind when viewing tables in Wellstar is the amount of rows populated within that table. The amount of rows is important when you choose to use the grid actions options. When you choose to view on map or export Excel, this grid option will apply to all of the rows contained within the grid. If you wish to further drill down the information in the grid and further define the viewing on map or export option, you can use advanced filters. Advanced filters are set up similar to the data dashboard where you choose a sp specific column to do filtering on and you can choose a specific word or phrase and apply a specific filter to that. For this demonstration, we'll choose Kern County to perform an advanced filter on. The default filter is what's called a contains filter, which will search for other items in that column which contain the letters or numeric values you enter in that search grid. If we want to turn the filter into a different style where it does not contain, now we'll be looking at rows in our table for anything that was done outside of Kern County, where the county applied to the rows and we can see there are none. When filtering data, it's useful to remember what the end goal is and how many rows are populated in the grid. If we want to find how many permits have been denied, we can simply look up the permit status of denied, ensuring that our contains filter is set. Here we can see the results of our grid dropped down to 80. We can also turn that around to see how many permits are not in the status of denied by turning that advanced filter into a does not contain again noticing that the resulting rows changes. At any time, if you wish to reset your grid or go back to how the grid originally loaded, you can simply refresh your browser page. Similar to the data dashboard, when you're viewing information in Wellstar, there's available hyperlinks to take you to other areas of information. In this case, when you see a hyperlink to the Wellstem permit, Clicking that hyperlink will take you to a detail page, which is the second category of pages in Wellstar. Detail pages are drilled down information specific to the subject that you have chosen. In this case, we are viewing the Wellstem detail page for this permit number captured in the top left-hand section. All detail pages are organized the same way, or when you're viewing the first set of information on a detail page, it's captured under the tabs found at the top right under the white column. Selecting the tab options, you'll be able to view different data sets related to the different types of data for this Wellston permit. Within the permit tab of our Wellston detail page, we have different sections that call out information related to the section header. In this case, the upper section displays well information, high level information for the well that this permit was issued for. Scrolling down, if we're looking for stimulation information, location information, CEQA, groundwater monitoring, all of that information is captured in its own sections beneath that grid. We want to go look at additional information related to these permits. We can use the other sections of the Wellstem detail.
useful information for the document section is knowing that when documents are in Wellstar and have been approved through Wellstar, they are available to download from Wellstar directly. When Wellstar has documents that were captured or provided to CalGEM previous to Wellstar being implemented, those files will need to be requested through the secure file request tool. The way that Wellstar accepts data from operators or other interested third parties is through a series of forms. The associated snapshots grid in a document section for a detail page captures the forms that have been used to populate information in that section. The forms come in in a submitted status, and when the form is approved or denied, it is brought in and the data is updated in Wellstar. Navigating back to the Wellston permit section, we can find out more information related to the well that this permit was applied for. Similarly to list pages, when there are hyperlinks, selecting those hyperlinks will take you to alternative pages. Selecting a hyperlink on a well's API will take you to the well detail for that specific well. Again, when there is a summary section, the, the different sections of information are listed under the drop down with the white background. Looking at different information will be captured under the high level drop down options. And then in those sections, there are section headers that contain the information pertinent to those sections. If you want a snapshot or a PDF of the page you are viewing, you can use the yellow background actions option and export PDF. When on a well or Wellston detail, there's also an actions dropdown for a view on map option. Selecting the view on map will take you outside of Wellstar and into Wellfinder with it preloaded with this API located. Similar to the document section of a Wellston detail, well documents that were accepted through Wellstar will be available to download. And then if there are documents outside of Wellstar or legacy documents you wish to request, you can simply select the file request link, which will take you to the file request tool with that Wells API in context. Keeping in mind that whenever we're viewing specific pages, if we want to go back to the home page of Wellstar, we can simply select the home option at the top left hand corner. This concludes my demonstration of Wellstar and I'll pass it back to Christina. Thank you, Tay. Um, OK, so that concludes our sessions, our demonstrations for today on our online data portals. We will jump into our Q&A session and we welcome any questions you may have. I know a few have come in uh, during uh, the presentation, so I know one question we had somebody ask was, uh, is it possible to make direct database connections to the data? Um, for example, Oracle or SQL server connections. And so our team was able to respond. And so currently at this point, um, you will not be able to make direct correct, uh, connections for security reasons. However, you can download your data of interest um, and use it for your own purposes. So um, we had another question come in asking if the presentation slides are available following the event. Um, and the answer is yes, uh, happy to provide those as well. Um, feel free to email the CalGEM Pub Public Transparency Office and we've dropped the email address in the chat um, and you're welcome to send a request for that as well. Um, and our team can follow up with you. Um, we have another question here in the chat. Um, is information available, available on your website for UIC project information? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, their their undergrad UIC data um, is available. I, let me see if we can find a link for you. And we can drop that in the chat if we have that. Um, and if not, we can follow up with you. OK, let's see if we have any other outstanding questions. Um, the team was able to drop additional links in the chat, um, resources to the online data page. Um, one other 
helpful tool. I think um, we have a Q&A um, collected from the last set of workshops in April. Uh, we can go ahead and drop those in the chat as well. Those might be helpful tools to see what other Q&As were or questions and answers were shared during um, the last set of workshops. So um, our team will go ahead and drop those in now. Um, and then if there's any other questions, if not, I think we can move to the next slide. Okay. Okay, I think we have another question here. Um, can Calgem include the permit date permit number on the notice of intention submitted report in Wellstar once the permit is approved. Okay, thank you. Um, I think if that's something that's not currently there, um, you know, we can definitely pass along your suggestion um, and take that back to the team. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, and again, if for some reason uh, we didn't get your question answered today, uh, please feel free to follow up with us and, and we can make sure we look into that for you. All right, just one last slide. Um, I know we shared this at the beginning, but um, just as a reminder, we have the CalGEM online data page where you can find links to all of the data portals that were addressed today. Um, there's also a, a helpful reference guide the team has put together um, similar to the information that was addressed today. It'll it'll provide it in PDF form a one by one uh, or a step by step on how to gather different types of data. Um, and again, we have YouTube tutorials and if you have any other questions um, or needing a, a deeper dive into some more technical data, please do feel free to reach out. Okay, um, I think there is one more question while we have a few minutes and the team is working on responding now, which is how often is the spatial data update in your system? Is that daily, weekly, or monthly? Cindy is, er, and it looks like the response is, that the spatial data linked uh, with Wellstar is generally updated nightly. Okay, um, well, I think this concludes today's presentation. Um, feel free to join us again tomorrow um, or Thursdays. Uh, it will be the same topics addressed today and the same information. Um, and if you have any other questions, uh, there's an email address in the chat that you're welcome to um, reach out to. And I think that's that's our, our event for today. Thank you for joining us.